It is a month of thanksgiving and starting a series in Psalms with specifically Psalms of thankfulness. And I want to start this morning and I want to talk about why we should be thankful. This segment is called, I am thankful because. I am thankful because. The psalmist says in 118.1, thank the Lord because, man, there's no room for me. A guy that moves like me, I am just feeling like a caged animal up here. Thank the Lord because he's good. His love continues forever. Thank the Lord. Let the family of Aaron say his love continues forever. Let those who respect the Lord say his love continues forever. Why should that happen in first service too? Dude. I don't need no stinking music stand. Why should we be grateful to the Lord? Man, there are many, many, many reasons. But as you read that psalm, first and foremost, the reason that jumps out for me is that love, God's love. We should be thankful for God, to God for His love. So I want to ask you a question. And it's not rhetorical. If you answered the question, God's love is, what would be your answer? I, I know many people, the first thing that we think about is that God's love is unconditional. Um, human love is not unconditional. We don't get it. God loves us no matter what. He doesn't, he, he doesn't care if we are jacked up human beings. Or, well, no, everybody's a jacked up human being. So we all qualify for that. And God loves us Anyway, there are no conditions. God doesn't love you because you're good, because you're rich, because you're powerful, because you give a lot of money, because you do good deeds. God just loves you because he does. God's love is unconditional. So how would you finish that sentence? God's love is everything. That's good. Grace. Powerful. Powerful. Perfect. Undescribable. Undescribable. I had that this morning, but I want somebody to tell me about it. Can you describe that to me, Julie? Impossible. <laughs> Impossible to describe. God's love is everywhere. everywhere. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome is an awesome word, isn't it? <laughs> I love that word. God's love is. So for me, when I finish that statement, God's love is overwhelming. And the reason that word sticks with me is because when I came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I am a thick guy, it took me over 40 years to figure that out. The very first time I felt the love of God, it overwhelmed me. It brought me to my knees. It brought me to tears. And it hasn't stopped overwhelming me ever since. Man, if there's someone out here, you don't yet know God's love, that's what's waiting for you. That's, that, that's just a small description of a love that is absolutely indescribable. It's overwhelming, and it's an overpowering, and it's that every single day. 118 at verse 5, I was in trouble, so I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. I will not be afraid because the Lord is with me. People can't do anything to me. The Lord is with me to help me. So I will see my enemies defeated. It is better to trust the Lord than to trust people. It is better to trust the Lord than to trust princes. Why should we be grateful to the Lord? Well, because in times of trouble, the psalmist knows God is there. He has promised us over and over and over again in his word, I will never, ever leave you. I will never forsake you. I am there when life is good. I am there when life is hard. I am there all the time. Why should we be grateful to the Lord? That psalm says because he gives us freedom. 
You see, he gives us freedom from the penalty of our sin. He gives us freedom from the bondage to our sin. I don't know about you, but back in my old life, I did a whole bunch of things that I was not very proud of. And he freed me from the shame of that. He freed me from the need to have those behaviors. We should be thankful to God because he gives us freedom. He sets us free from fear. Free from fear. Think about how powerful that is. What is one of the most feared things among humankind? We fear death. He has set us free from fear. Even the fear of death. Why should we be grateful? I think this psalmist in that stanza summed it up in one verse. The word, the one word, the word is trust. Trust. We can trust God no matter what. And, and I don't want to be this like bubble bursting moment here, but the one person who will never, ever, ever let you down is God. He can be trusted. You are loved by people here on this earth, friends, family, you, you name it. No matter how good they are and how much they love you, someday they're going to let you down because they're human and we just mess up. God will never, ever let you down. 118 and 17, I will not die, but live. And I will tell what the Lord has done. The Lord has taught me a hard lesson, but he did not let me die. Open for me the temple gates, then I will come in and thank the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Only those who are good may enter through it. Let me explain that. Don't think that you're just a good person and the gooder you are, the better it's going to be and you're going to be able to go into heaven. You are not a good person. And no matter how much gooder you think you can get, not one of us is good enough. The only reason we're good enough is through the sacrifice of what Jesus did on the cross. We become good through him. Those are the ones who enter the Lord's gates. Lord, I thank you for answering me. You have saved me. You're my God and I will thankful. Will thank you. You are my God and I will praise your greatness. Thank the Lord because he's good. His love continues forever. Why should we be grateful to the Lord? Is there any other reason than the way that verse started? Because I will not die. You see, the reality is for those of us who know and love and follow Jesus Christ, death has no sting. Death doesn't exist. We simply go from this life to a better life. Why should I be thankful to the Lord? Because I will not die.
So the opening segment this morning, I'm thankful because. This, this next segment I want to I talk about, I am thankful even when. And so you listen to the, to the lyrics that were just sung and how God has separated our sin as far as the east is from the west and he loves us and he cares for us. And, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to be thankful to God in those moments, isn't it? That, that song that led into that, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. What about the morning you wake up? And it's not a new mercy that you see, but it's a new tragedy. What's it like to be thankful, to worship, to praise our God when life's not so good? Henri Nouwen once said, to be grateful for the good things that happen in our lives is easy, but to be grateful for all of our lives, the good as well as the bad, the moments of joy as well as the moments of sorrow, the successes as well as the failures, the rewards as well as the rejections. That, that requires hard spiritual work. Still, we are only truly grateful people when we can say thank you to all that has brought us to the present moment. As long as we keep dividing our lives between events and people we would like to remember and those we would rather forget, we cannot claim the fullness of our beings as a gift of God to be grateful for. Let's not be afraid to look at everything that has brought us to where we are now and trust that we will soon see in it the guiding hand of a loving God. So I got to have a conversation with a family this week, Terry and Sammy, and they were telling me about the birth of their daughter. Anyone that's been there, you know how that moment is. There's this excitement, there's this anticipation, right? And then the baby comes out, and what is the first thing we're waiting for? The cry. 10 seconds, 15, 30 nothing. 45 a minute more. And then she screams. As her parents told me the story, they said the silence was deafening. And then they told me from that moment forward, she never shut up. Like she was that kid that was so full of energy and excitement and vibrance and she had something to say about everything in the world and she wanted to make sure to say it. And she talked and she talked and she talked. You've been around that person, that person that just talks incessantly. I'm sorry. And don't occasionally, e even though you love to hear your child, don't you occasionally want to just go, shh. Five minutes, just five minutes. And the parents admitted to that in their lives. And then yesterday afternoon, in this room, they shared about how now that she's gone in a very tragic, tragic accident, the silence in their home is deafening. How do you praise God through that? Where do you find the guiding hand of God in the loss of your 12-year-old baby girl? I'm in the middle of a book right now. I like, I like to read. The guy's name is Kyle Eidelman, not only an author, but he's a pastor. And he tells of a story in his book about having a similar conversation with a father that had just very tragically lost his son. 
And as the father finished telling the story, these are his words. I feel like I reached the point in my life when I had absolutely nothing left. And it turns out for the first time in my life, Jesus became real. Jesus became real when I reached the end of me. God can and does work miracles in those moments. And he gives us gifts we never expected. So after the service was over and we were having conversation, well, a young man had stood up. His name is Neil. And he was Anya's big brother, 25 years old from a previous marriage. They had never met until about a year ago when Anya reached out to him and said, I heard I have a big brother and I'd like to meet you. And they did. And he said they had the most incredible year together. And how pained he was that she was gone. And then he told me this. He said, I've never, ever been a person of faith. But through this tragedy, for the very first time in my life, I prayed to a God I didn't even know existed. And didn't know if I can believe in him then. And I talked to my little sister as I prayed. And he said, what I prayed for was that God would just make it stop hurting. And he looked me square in the eye and he says, God showed up today. And he took away my pain. You see, for him in that moment, in this tragedy, in the loss of a little girl he only knew for a year, Jesus became real. <sighs> Wherever we find ourselves, whenever we find ourselves at the end of ourselves, that is when Jesus should be, you rock, real. <sighs> if there is anyone that understands the pain of loss and the suffering that comes with it, it is our God because he willingly gave his own son to die so that we might live. I love you guys a lot, every single one of you, and there isn't a one of you that I'd sacrifice my child to save. But God did. We're going to remember that sacrifice and the good that came from it.
Yeah. 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 So I'm thankful because, and I'm thankful even, even when. What am I thankful for? We're going to close this day of worship and thanksgiving with a reading of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of His benefits. Who pardons all of your iniquities? Who heals your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion? Who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle? The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who were oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, thank God nor rewarded us for our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His loving kindness toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. For He Himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. I often need to be reminded. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. And when the wind is has passed over, it is no more. And its place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting for those who fear him and His righteousness to, ch to children's children, to those who keep His covenant and remember His precepts to do them. The Lord has established His throne in the heavens and His sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you His angels, mighty in strength to perform His word, obeying the voice of His word. Bless the Lord, all you His hosts, you who serve Him doing His will. Bless the Lord, all you works of His, in all the places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We have one final song this morning. I suspect you know it. It's called 10,000 Reasons. And the lyrics were born from the psalm we just read. It was written by a guy named Matt Redman. And he said, the song was in easy, right? It just kind of fell into my lap after I read the song. And then he said this, if you wake up one day and you can't think of a reason to praise him, well, something's wrong with your spiritual outlook. As the band launches into the song, I'd like to ask you to do one more thing for me this morning. You may have noticed there are sticky notes of all kinds of colors. I want each one to have one. There are pens all over the place. If you don't have a sticky note or a pen, raise your hand. We've got some people that will bring them. And what I want to ask you to do is to write down just one thing. I am thankful to God for, for my kids, for Jesus, 
for the breath in my lungs, the food on my plate, the church that he provides me. It could be one word, it could be a sentence. What are you thankful to God for? And then there's one other thing that goes with this. After we sing this song and as you leave today, if you would take those sticky notes out to the blackboard wall in the cafe, we're calling it the wall of thanks and it's going to stay up for all in November as we give thanks to God through the Psalms. And it is my prayer that we might somehow come up with 10,000 reasons to praise our God.